Hi. Today I have Iman Shu with me as a guest. He wrote uh, a new book with Prashant a few months ago about how to optimize your workloads. Hi, Iman Shu. Hi, Yusuf. Thanks for inviting me. So please, can you walk me through uh, the guide uh, you wrote and show me how to find it? Absolutely, yes. Let me share my screen. Okay, I share my desktop. Can you see my screen, Yusuf? Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's start with a quick uh, Google search to find that optimization guide that Yusuf had, has mentioned. So all we need to do is just type Databricks optimization guide. And here you go. I think this is like in the, that's, that's the first uh, uh, link that you will find here. So it's a comprehensive uh, guide to optimize data workloads. And then you can land on the home page of this guide. Uh, you said from, yeah, probably I can give a quick uh, like walkthrough of different sections of the guide and then we, we can jump into one particular section. Would yeah. that make sense? Awesome. So uh, basically this guide uh, is uh, kind of, uh, I would say like it's uh, uh, based on my and Prashant experience working with database customers over the years. And this contains lots of uh, tips and you know uh, best practices to optimize your data engineering workloads, whether you're using Spark, Delta Lake, and Databricks in general. So this guide is uh, kind of broken down into multiple, uh, let's say, chapters or subsections. Uh, we have sections around uh, Delta Lake, like how you can optimize uh, Delta Lake uh, uh, file layout. We have a lot of uh, you know tricks and tips on Spark optimization, like you know data shuffling, spilling, uh, data skewness, data explosion. Then we also talk about how you can basically skip uh, data when you are querying different tables, right? Uh, we have a section on data caching, uh, how you can uh, clean up your uh, uh, table or let's say the file underlying your tables, which are not uh, you know, uh, needed anymore. And we have a section on Delta Merge, how you, how you can basically speed this up. Um, and yeah, like at the end of the, the book, you will find some some information about Delta Live tables. And then, the, then there's a kind of a big chapter on uh, Databricks cluster configuration and optimization. So I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's it, uh, Yusuf. Uh, should we start with one of these sections? Yeah, and I would choose to start with how to optimize my Spark workloads. Makes sense. I think that's the most important one. So uh, for Spark optimization, uh, I, I think there are like a couple of sections like shuffling, spilling, skewness, explosion, and skipping. So let's probably take like a couple of these sections and I think uh, rest will be uh, like uh, quite quite easy to kind of, you know, uh, uh, go through later. So start. let's start with the shuffling. So each section of the book of this book uh, starts uh, with a quick introduction of the problem statement. Like in this case, what is shuffling? Uh, why it happens? So basically, like uh, we are uh, like uh, uh, giving some context that whenever you are doing wide transformations like joints and aggregation, uh, Spark uh, basically needs to move data between workers. You know, so that kind of uh, causes data shuffle. Uh, and then we talk about like challenges, like why shuffling is, is is bad or why we need to control it. So basically, like whenever there's a shuffle, you have a lot of disk I/O, network I/O, and all of these things is gonna basically, uh, you know, cause uh, some delays in your job execution. Now, and, and at the end of the, uh, the section, then, then we have like a lot of, uh, you, I would say like uh, uh, tips to optimize uh, uh, for this particular problem statement, like in case of shuffling, uh, obviously the first or uh, the best optimization is to avoid the shuffle altogether. And that you can do if you can broadcast one of the two tables that you are, uh, for example, joining together, right? Then we basically talk about different way to, to broadcast, like using some, you know, hints in the, in the, in the SQL query, or you can set up some threshold. And based on this threshold, if your table size is basically less or equal to this value, Spark is gonna automatically broadcast your table. Uh, similarly, you can also use AQE to do that. Uh, uh, once the job is started, basically AQE can uh, work on the plan and optimize it uh, on the go. And then in, in the each section, uh, there are some, you know, you will see this, this alert icon. So this is more like um, some gotchas or some key takeaways uh, of each section. And in, in, these, in, in this area, you will also find some corner cases or caveats where you need 
some further tuning uh, to basically achieve uh, what you're trying to do. Like in this case, I've uh, talked about uh, one corner case is that when your tables are uh, like highly compressed on disk, uh, sometimes up, like broadcasting those tables can end up into out of memory exception because uh, like these are too big when they are decompressed and you know converted to uh, row format in the memory. So for these kind of uh, scenarios, uh, either you can completely uh, disable the, the broadcast or you can choose a smaller uh, threshold so that like uh, very big uh, tables which are highly compressed are not you know automatically broadcasted. Uh, again, like some other uh, configuration tuning that you might, uh, that you will require. For example, this parameter is very important because uh, broadcast happens through driver and by default driver, driver can basically hold up to one uh, gigabyte of result. Uh, so you need to increase this value if you want to basically broadcast some bigger tables. So yeah, so yeah. that's that's about uh, broadcasting. Uh, I, I believe that's one something I wanted to add is that for the AQ, the AQE handles, uh, let's say 80% of the optimizations by, by, by design. And yeah. if when I go further with this 20 remain percent, then you need to be experienced because if you yeah. do modify uh, any configuration, it can improve uh, the efficiency, but it can also uh, uh, it can also take your job down. So we need to be yes. very careful. Yes, with, with and optimization. this is what like this is what we are trying to uh, share through this guide. That these are the things that we have battle tested. Like for example, uh, by default, if you have a doubt, like don't go over two hundred megabytes of threshold because we know that after this point, probably broadcasting is going to be more costly than shuffle, right? So these are the basically, I would say the, the configuration values that we have kind of figured out over the years. And that's what we are trying to share uh, through this guide. Similarly, like uh, in case of shuffle, you can uh, prefer shuffle hash over sort merge join, which might be a bit cheaper in terms of execution. Uh, you know, uh, we can leverage a cost-based optimizer, uh, which can basically reorder the join uh, operations. Like if you are doing multiple joins operations, it's better to join like smaller table first and then the bigger table that will give you more you know, uh, like faster join operation because you are skipping a lot, lot of data from the beginning. So uh, yeah, these are the things that that you need to think about when you are again uh, trying to uh, optimize your shuffles. And I have just something to add regarding the analyze table. So this is something uh, yeah, I think uh, people should keep in mind that in case, for example, you added a new column or multiple columns, you'd better uh, run this analyze table because even if Delta captured the statistics by default for the first 32 columns, uh, it won't do it for the new columns you have added. So yeah, uh, you as run you, if analyze. Yeah, as you can see, Yusuf, like there's a uh, okay. clear guideline that an, the like analyze command is like a maintenance command. You have to run it regularly, uh, yeah. probably on a daily basis because otherwise you will be like, Analyze table generates statistics, which are stored in high meta store, for example. Uh, and these stats are used by Spark during the physical uh, planning when it prepares the plan. So if you don't have updated uh, stats, obviously you're gonna work with the stale values and Spark will not be able to generate the optimized plan, right? So anyway, you have to like run this command regularly. Otherwise, obviously you are not taking advantage of CDO in a way that uh, you know it should be. Perfect. Uh, let's move on to another section, which is data spilling. So uh, spilling, again, we start with the problem definition, like whenever we are doing transformations like shuffles, uh, uh, we might end up seeing some data being spilled to disk because we cannot, like Spark cannot fit that data into memory, okay? Now spill is, spilling is bad because obviously if you are putting data into disk, you have to serialize it, then write it to disk, then once the memory is kind of freed up, you have to read back from this, then deserialize it. So all these uh, cycle wasted, obviously gonna slow down your job. So the idea would be to avoid spilling as much as possible, okay? And uh, again, we, we talk about different ways to do that. Like you can just go for AQE, as you, you said mentioned, like AQE take care of like most of the things uh, in your Spark job automatically. Like for example, you can like the, like the, the root cause of spilling, uh, one of the, let's say the, the reason is, uh, not having enough shuffle partitions, right? That means you have less number of shuffle partitions than required. So each core is doing a lot of 
basically data shuffling and basically taking care of a lot of data. And that's like, it doesn't have that much of memory and that's why it kind of spills some part of it into, into this, right? So if you can increase the number of shuffle partitions, that problem will be taken care. But again, fine tuning, uh, number of shuffle partition is it takes some some experience so if you can't do that you can ob obviously go for this auto uh, parameter and it will like uh, uh, do that calculation for you and again as i said like each section would have some caveats like in this case i'm explaining ex again the same case uh, for highly compressed tables uh, like which are 20 to 40x compressed on disk uh, this parameter might not give you exactly the right value that you are looking for uh, so again this section explains how you can find out first, like whether your table is highly compressed on disk or not. Once you have kind of figured that out, uh, in that case, if AQV no, is not giving you the right value by default, there is a way to further tween, uh, sorry, to, uh, tweak AQE with this uh, parameter. By default, this parameter is set to 128 MB, but you can reduce this value to, for example, 16 MB. In that case, AQE will give you more shuffle partitions. And at the end, let's say, even if with that you feel like you need to go a mile ahead and do the, the the manual fine tuning. Then again, we have a section on that which explains clearly like uh, what are the the metrics that you have to pick from Spark UI. Uh, and once you have those metrics, just put them in this nice and simple formula, and it, it will give you like exactly the right number of shuffle partitions required for your you know shuffle stage. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, and some some gotchas. Yeah. Yeah. And just something I wanted to add because sometimes people tend tend to think that if they have uh, this uh, data spilling, they increase the memory of the cluster. Uh, but that it's will, not the that, first that thing. Will not help. That yeah. will not help. Like, uh, even if you have, have 1,000 uh, cores and uh, gigabytes of memory, by default, the shuffle partition value is set to 200, right? So anyway, you are not going to be using more than 200 CPU cores, and that's a problem, right? So you need to fix your shuffle partitions uh, to take care of this problem. Yeah, and let's move on to data skewness. So again, we start with the, the problem definition. What is data skew? So basically, whenever you are doing, for example, joins or aggregations uh, using some business column and your data is basically unevenly distributed uh, across the different values of that, that business column, that will obviously cause some skew because as long as soon as you shuffle, there will be one CPU core that will have a lot of data and others will not have that much of data to process. So this basically what will happen is that all the tasks or cores will finish very quickly, but there will be probably one or two cores which are basically doing a lot of processing, will kind of uh, stay stuck for minutes or hours, and that is basically wasting of resources, uh, losing a lot of execution time. So yeah, that's that's the skew. Uh, you can identify that skew very easily on the Spark UI. Like if you look through this, uh, you know, uh, task uh, uh, distribution uh, metrics, you you would see like uh, there is like one 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 bar which is uh, really bigger than other bars. So that's obviously a task which is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Same thing can be seen from this, uh, you know, metrics as well. Like 199 of 200 tasks are done, and like we are waiting for one task uh, for eternity. So obviously that's a skew. And lastly, like same thing can be re-verified if you go into these detailed summary metrics of uh, different tasks. Like if there's a huge difference in the shuffle read size for a minimum and the maximum, uh, you know, uh, task. Obviously, like there's one task which is like doing 2.3 uh, gigabyte of data processing compared to the one, the smallest one, which is doing a couple of megabytes. Right. So yeah, these are the the, the ways to identify skewness. Now, once you have identified the skewness okay like you can also run this query at the end if you want to be like really really sure yeah and um, like to fix skewness uh, again we have shared different ways and i think what is important is also kind of uh, try to use this in this order if possible like if you can filter out the values that are causing skew the skew is gone for example in some in many cases if you are joining with a column which has a lot of null values you are going to end up into skew. But do you really need to join with null? I don't think that makes sense. Like in many cases, it doesn't make sense. So if you can filter out those uh, problematic values, uh, that basically fixes your skew automatically. Otherwise, you can use skew hints. Uh, if not, uh, AQE also comes up with the automated uh, skew optimization. So basically, I think this is by default activated uh, as long as you enable your like your AQE is enabled. Uh, you can further tune AQE. Like by default, any partition which is 
five times bigger than the median partition size and which has at least 256 MB data inside uh, is considered as skewed partition. But you can always uh, basically lower down these values if you want to make uh, like you want to further tweak equity. And lastly, like the manual technique to, to handle uh, skew, which we have been using for uh, generations is okay. called sorting. Yes, so I've given a nice example here for sorting where you can basically add some random value and kind of suffix to to with your uh, uh, value column values where you have the skewness so that you kind of can get some more even distribution and then you kind of join with these uh, randomly generated uh, uh, keys, right? So yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much it for skewness. And there's some other sections about data explosion, data skipping. So just to kind of uh, keep this video short, I'm not gonna go through this uh, today, but yeah, feel free to browse through these sections. And again, as you will find like uh, this book is designed in a way that you don't have to spend too much time. Like each section is targeted for a particular problem statement. It takes like hardly five minutes to go through this section and understand how you can fix it. So yeah, give it a try. And um, just one more thing I would like to add, like this was uh, released uh, last year. Uh, uh, Prashant and I and team are also working on a refresher or a new version of this book uh, that will have like a few other things like uh, a lot of content on streaming, how you can optimize Spark structure streaming, autoloader streaming, uh, how you and all the new features that came out uh, lately, like uh, in, in Databricks, for example, liquid clustering, uh, deletion vectors, predictive optimization, uniform, all those things are coming up in a few months. So I, I believe, Imanshu, by last year, it means uh, 2023. So we will have a new yeah. release in 2024. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Imanshu, for walking us through the um, uh, Spark optimization. And see you in the next uh, chapter. Thank you, Seth. Bye.